Joining us now from London is Royal Commentator Josh Rom. Josh, great to speak with you. It has been revealed that King Charles may be extending an olive branch to his youngest son, Prince Harry, and daughter-in-law, Meghan Markle, and invite them to Balmoral Castle in Scotland. What more can you tell us about this? Yes, so a source has told Page Six that His Majesty is considering quote, extending an olive branch to Prince Harry, Meghan Markle and their two children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Now we know that uh, the King has not seen Prince uh, Princess Lilibet since uh, since before the death of her late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The last time he saw Princess Lilibet was at uh, the, the 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 Platinum Jubilee of her late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It's kind of been hinted at by sources that um, ever since his cancer diagnosis that King Charles is, quote, desperate to see his his grandchildren, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. And we know that he's still, that tensions between him and his son, Prince Harry, have, so, have sort of warmed somewhat. Things are not quite so tense between the King and Prince Harry. We know that after the King revealed his bombshell cancer diagnosis, Prince Harry was on the first flight out of Montecito, rushing to see his father, even if it was just 15 minutes at the palace. Uh, whether it was a PR stunt, we don't know Prince Harry's motivations behind that visit. But what we do know is that he does actually care about his father. And despite his father's very busy schedule, his father at least wants to see his son. And I've, mm. I've had a source tell me months upon months ago, actually, that King Charles does miss Prince Harry. King Charles misses his son, and there were at least some talks maybe that were going on behind the scenes to see whether he can come back in some form, not necessarily to work. We know, um, I think several sources have been very clear that actually Prince William has definitely drawn the line in the sand. We know that Prince Harry um, and what him and Meghan have said in their documentaries in the Oprah interview and in Spare, they have done absolute, they have done potentially immeasurable damage to the reputation of the Prince of Wales, especially. I mean, for Meghan Markle to make the claims to a gobsmacked and shocked Oprah with her mouth wide open, saying that two members of the royal family, which have since been reported uh, unsubstantiated to be the the king and the princess of Wales for them to say that there was quote concerns unquote of the color of a future of their child's skin color I mean it was outrageous some of the some of the some of the they have done absolutely immeasurable damage and now we see Meghan Markle um, at the uh, Thanksgiving service at the time of the Platinum Jubilee dressed in um in a very in a white outfit that was similar to wallace simpson so i i mean I, things are still very much a long way off um yeah but we do see at least a rumored rumored lines rumors of a potential olive branch reconciliation between the king and prince harry not so much between his brother Prince William. Now, yeah. over some of the royal family do stay in Balmoral, and Balmoral might just also be the perfect place for them to potentially reconcile. We know that Balmoral was, it might invoke some difficult memories for Prince Harry. That was where uh, Prince Harry and Prince William and and now King Charles were located the night uh, that Princess Diana did pass away, did was killed in that ca tragic car accident in Paris. So although that might invoke painful memories, Balmoral is a very peaceful place, but it's also, it could be a place that emphasizes the bond that they all share together, that, that togetherness, that sticking together as a family unit when the times do get tough. So Balmoral also might just be the perfect place for a potential reconciliation. And it could be beautiful surroundings for his majesty, the king, to properly get to know his, his grandchildren, which he doesn't really know.
Mm. And of course, that is something that King Charles would want. And as you say, he's the one extending the olive branch, but that rift between Harry and William appears to be very much still there. Now, there are reports that the Duchess of Sussex could be joining Prince Harry on his trip to the UK for the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. But Meghan Markle apparently doesn't feel wanted in the UK and fears being thrown back into the anxiety fueled visit may not be a good thing. Well, Josh, she, she's probably right. She probably has a point. I'm not sure how comfortable I would feel going back to the UK if I was Meghan Markle. Yeah, I, I think she most definitely has a point there. I, I, will, I will give it to Meghan Markle. I don't think she is particularly wanted in the UK at the moment. Um, I think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have a lot of work to do, not just in their rehabilitation um, with the, within the royal family, but also the rehabilitation of their public image. All they have done is trashed the country, trashed our institutions, trashed how it's worked for the past three years. And they've come across as pretty self-entitled. I mean, Meghan and Harry, especially doing all the moaning from their huge mansion in Montecito, woe is me, paying for security, when this is money that the average British citizen and I think the average Australian too can only dream of. So they, they've come across as self-entitled, um, I, I, I mean, their popularity all over the place has really been going down the pan. They're, they're, they're just this week, Princess Catherine has been voted the most popular royal approval ratings of over 70%. Meghan Markle is absolutely nowhere near that level. So I, 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 so I, I see exactly where Meghan's coming from. And whilst Prince Harry is a prince of the realm and the country has amazing memories of Prince Harry working, um, you know, representing the country in Afghanistan, being a prince of, of, of everyone's hearts, his cheeky adverts with the Invictus Games, with his late grandmother, the Queen. Um, you know, we, we've, we've, the UK has taken Harry to their hearts over a number of years. So there's still the sentimental value with Harry there. And especially we can't help but look at what he does with Invictus and admire him for that. But Meghan Markle does not have that same power. She only really came on the scene um, in 2017 and 2018 when she started up that relationship with Prince Harry. She hasn't grown up in the UK public eye. So when we see someone who's been absolutely trashing the royal family who, that we've been growing up with, making absolutely bombshell statements, being seen almost as this royal rebel rouser, I mean, she doesn't have that same sentimental value that Prince Harry has in this country, regardless of Prince Harry's own opinion ratings anyway. There's still at least love left with Prince Harry. I don't think it's the same with Meghan Markle. So I definitely see exactly where Meghan Markle's coming from. And actually, we talk about the royals and all of this stuff and royal commentators say, well, this one overshadows the king, this one overshadows this, this one has Prince Harry overshadowed the Prince of Wales and all, and all of that stuff in the past. Well, actually, I think Meghan Markle being at the Invictus Games would only be a distraction within mm. Harry when Harry's in that environment where he feels most at home and that is uh, promoting a cause that he feels so passionate about helping wounded army veterans Megan would be a distraction and also can I just say I think it would be understandable for Megan to stay at home as she cares for her young children so I don't think people would necessarily hold it against her for that and I think this is if Harry does want to rehabilitate his image within the royal family and within the country, I think Harry at first might have to do that alone and then bring yeah. him with him. 
It's a good point, and I think Meghan Markle has a very long way to go if she wants to become as popular as Princess Catherine. And we'll speak about Princess Catherine in just a moment, but I want to get back to King Charles because there are plans for his trip to come to Australia. Well, they are well and truly underway. They are cautiously taking shape as he, of course, resumes work following treatment for cancer. And invitations to events such as the Melbourne Cup and Everest Race Day are said to be under consideration. Josh Rom, what more can you tell us? Should we be cautiously optimistic that this visit to Australia will be going ahead? Well, sources close to the king have said, and I think the quote is, he is raring and ready to go at any moment. I think this is an extremely optimistic sign for King Charles, the fact that he wants to get back to work. And actually, I think we, as we're seeing the footage on screen now, we're, we're seeing, you know, that almost, I wouldn't say unprecedented walkabout, but considering he is mm. fighting cancer at the moment and is undergoing cancer, the fact that he was not just waving at the crowd outside of St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle on Easter Sunday. The fact that he was there shaking their hands, greeting people, being up close and personal, and not just one or two hands, but many hands within the crowd interacting with many people. This was him doing what he does best. It shows that he, he, he is, at least he could be getting better, or at least that he's definitely ready to get back to work, to, to do those front-facing royal duties again. That's the thing. The, the, there is a reason why Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II wear, wore colourful clothing back in the day, and that was because she wanted to be seen as so many people, and she knew that she had to stand out. And I think the same mentality goes with His Majesty King Charles. He wants to be seen. He wants to be seen doing stuff, and it's not just events around the UK. He cares a lot about the Commonwealth of Nations as well, and 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 bearing in mind he is still technically had of state of uh, of countries such as Australia and Canada so it's not surprising especially with Australia having that republican mentality as well it is important that the monarchy at least shows visibility in Australia shows that they care about Australia I think this shows just how much Prince Charles cares about Australia that as long as he 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 is declared fit by his medical team he wants to do whatever he can to get to Australia, but the signs are there of optimism for King Charles. He is clearly, at least seemingly from the outside looking in, he seems to be getting better. His medical team may have probably given him permission to start doing stuff, start easing in, and well, the uh, the the Austra a trip to Australia might be just the ticket.